as an innovator in the realm of VR engines. Volkswagen has pioneered the development of an impressive array of these engines, harnessing nearly the full potential of this concept, ranging from a VR5 configuration to the powerful 16-cylinder a majority of the flagship Volkswagen models and their subsidiary brands have at one point embraced variations of this design, seemingly exploiting its capabilities to the maximum extent. However, a recent revelation has unveiled that Volkswagen had been discreetly testing an unprecedented iteration of the VR engine back in the time, utilizing a competitor's car as the testbed for their research and development endeavors. While many of you might be already familiar with the VR engine design, let's take a moment to revisit its essential facets. The VR acronym is derived from a phrase of Fertkurs Reihen Motor, translating to a shortened inline engine. Fundamentally, it blends the attributes of inline and V-shaped engines within a single engine block, featuring an exceptionally narrow bang angle, typically ranging between 10 to 20 degrees. Although Lancia can be credited with pioneering this concept back in 1922, it was Volkswagen that truly brought it to the forefront that quickly grew into a cult following. Volkswagen's very first VR engine introduced itself as a 6 cylinder VR6 engine with a displacement of 2.8 liters debuting in 1991. This innovative engine featured a 15-degree angle between its two three-cylinder banks housed within a robust cast iron block, effectively laying the foundation for subsequent iterations of this concept. Operating as a two-valve engine, it delivered a power range of 140 to 177 horsepower. A subsequent version incorporated a four-valve head and an increased compression ratio, resulting in a much better airflow and higher power output of 200 horsepower. Yet it wasn't solely the power output that propelled its fame, it was the distinctive exhaust note and notably compact dimensions that made it suitable for installation in models such as the Golf, Jetta and Corrado. The year 1997 even witnessed the launch of a 5-cylinder variant based on the VR6 design. In the same year, Volkswagen unveiled the W12 Nardo concept, which hinted at an alternative iteration of the VR design. This concept eventually saw its production version introduced in 2001. The W12 engine architecture involves the fusion of two 15-degree VR6 engines interconnected at the crankshaft axis, forming an angle of 72 degrees. This choice of configuration was a universal one, as it was also adapted for an 8-cylinder version that shared the same fundamental design. Differing from the W16, which featured a 90-degree angle, the W8 employed a 72-degree bang angle and incorporated a minus 18 degree crankshaft offset to achieve the conventional firing sequence of a V8 engine at 90 degree intervals. Conversely, the 12 cylinder variant incorporated plus 12 degrees offshore journals to achieve a harmonious firing sequence. Intriguingly to this narrative is the revelation from Volkswagen's self-study program, which indicated the potential existence of a 10 cylinder variant composed of twin VR5 engines, effectively eliminating the need for offset adjustments to attain optimal primary forces. The document explicitly states, a W10 engine consisting of two VR5 engines is also a possibility. This covers the complete range of W engines. The layout of the W engine is based on a 10-cylinder engine, and recent revelations have confirmed its existence, supported by extensive testing within an actual car that recently appeared on sale, but more on that later. In contrast to the cast and construction of the VR5, 
The Double Ten was meticulously crafted from cast aluminum and was also equipped with the better flowing four valve heads. Given that both the W8 and W12 shared identical cylinder dimensions measuring 84 by 90.2 mm, the 10 cylinder iteration would potentially inherit an engine displacement of 5 liters. This powerhouse allegedly generated around 500 horsepower and a staggering 550 Nm of torque, ultimately being an absolute rocket, particularly by the standards of the early 2000s. This suggests that they potentially tested a performance variant, as normally a naturally aspirated W12 was about 450 to 500 horsepower. Based on the most recent discoveries, it has come to light that a minimum of three W10 engine blocks were manufactured, with one of them apparently in the possession of a German VW mechanic. This man acquired the engine block in 2011, preventing it from falling into obscurity as scrap. Although he possesses a partially equipped cylinder head as well, the engine is lacking several critical components, including the crankshaft, an exhaust camshaft and the engine timing system. Subsequently, a few days later, yet another W10 engine emerged on the internet, housed within an unconventional vehicle. The crux of the matter lies in Ferdinand Piek's pursuit of an engine that would distinguish itself from the competition, a motive that underpins the entire W engine concept. However, there was a notable absence of a suitable vehicle for testing this potent power plant. Consequently, the solution was to acquire a BMW M5 of the E39 generation, featuring a manual gearbox. The original 4.9 litre V8 was thrown out, making way for a manual gearbox integration with the all aluminum 500 horsepower double 10 engine. This adaption incurred an increase in weight by about 11 kilograms, yet the power boost was a substantial 25% improvement. This captivating revelation shed more light on the W10 project, exposing the existence of a second engine developed within the project. Pierre held a profound fondness for this vehicle, employing it for his daily commutes and personal rides. Presently, this remarkable automobile is up for sale, with the exact amount unspecified. Imagine that this is the most unique M5 ever, and at the same time, the first 10-cylinder M5 that was not even built by BMW itself.